Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in December 2019. The major product formed in the following reaction is a starting material is given. We have a again an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is given and this is treated with uh, paratoline uh, sulfonyl hydrazine acetic acid sodium cyanoborohydride at 70 degrees centigrade to give one of the products. So, four options are given here and as we know the carbonyl group is converted into alkene. So, that is what we have to see in this particular case because here we do not have a epoxidation formation that is happening like the previous two cases. So, in other words we can say here the carbonyl group oxygen is lost. So, when that carbonyl group's oxygen is lost we will uh, in this particular case we are getting a couple of different alkenes. So, in the first one uh, the carbonyl group is completely reduced. So, we have a alkyl uh, methylene carbon that is formed. In the second case also we have a methylene uh, carbon that is formed, but we have an additional double bond with the loss of the acetate group is shown here. So, in the option C we have the loss of uh, the carbonyl group, but there is a isomerization or a shift of double bond that is happening. And in the last case we have the alkene group is uh, present, but one more additional alkene uh, bond is formed. So, these are all the four different option given and we are going to find it out which one is actually happening. So, let us look at the reaction. So, the first reaction we have a alpha beta unsaturated system and this uh, when treated with the tocyl hydrazine leads to the formation of sulfonyl hydrazone. So, here the carbonyl group we have the hydrazone formation happens and the next step is basically the reduction of the tocyl hydrazone with uh, sodium cyanoborohydride in the presence of acetic acid because generally sodium cyanoborohydride reductions are uh, occurring in the acidic conditions. So, we are going to supply hydride anion. So, hydride anion means we can assume that it is very similar to the sodium uh, tertiary butoxide case where we have a base which abstracts the acidic proton. So, similarly we can assume that a nucleophile in this particular case will abstract or will react with the most acidic uh, hydrogen. So, as we know this is the most acidic hydrogen in this particular case. So, we can uh, say this particular hydride anion can abstract this uh, hydrogen. So, that is option number 1. So, if that happens then we are going to end up with the hydrogen gas, but then there will be a negative charge only on the nitrogen. So, we do not know how that electron will move. So, that is one option. And the second option is there is a nucleophilic uh, double bond because when we carry out uh, reductions basically the double bonds are also reduced uh, not by uh, sodium cyanoborohydride or other cases. So, in this particular case we are going to look at how that hydride ion can actually add across the double bond. The reason is there is a electron withdrawing nitrogen groups that are present here and uh, the formation or the flow of electrons are the crucial thing because here we are going to form a nitrogen gas that is going to be lost in this particular case. So, that is what will happen in the next step and when we talk about organic reaction mechanism many of the reactions are called as a, uh, following a microscopic reversibility principle. So, that is the reason in a particular step if something is not happening, but it is happening at a later stage then the first step can obviously follow so that the later steps can be easily carried out. So, that is how the microscopic reversibility principle actually occurs. So, there are various possibilities for many organic reaction mechanism and that is one of the reason we generally do not get 100 percent of the product in many of the reactions. We also have multiple products that are formed because there will be various permutation combinations or various possibilities that may exist in this in that particular case. So, every possibility may occur, but maybe one of the possibility has uh, larger possibility or probability of uh, occurring. So, that is how the final products are formed. 
so that is the reason we generally try to talk about major product that is formed not about all the products that are formed because major product will be one which follows some steric reasons or electronic reasons or other reasons or uh, has to be satisfied for that particular major product to be formed so in this case we are going to look at the same thing so the hydride anion can add across this particular double bond so this reaction is called a 1,4 addition reaction because when we follow this 1,4 addition type reaction the next step is going to be the shift of uh, electrons as shown here so this uh, in the first step the tocyl group is lost as a minus uh, ts anion so this is the first thing happening and uh, this alkene bond becomes like an alkyl group and there is a shift of bond from this particular uh, extra exocyclic one to the uh, next uh, position and uh, in this particular case one of the nitrogen is having a acidic hydrogen so this is also lost or this is actually captured by this anion that will be formed here so this leads to the formation of nitrogen gas so as we uh, look very carefully here why the first step should happen is in the second step a gas is formed as the byproduct nitrogen gas is formed as a byproduct so the reversible conditions are made irreversible by the loss of nitrogen gas in the subsequent step so that is the reason the first step actually happens and that leads to the isomerization or a shift of double bond from the terminal position to the internal one so this is one way of the reaction proceeding there is also another way in which the hydride anion actually attacks the uh, this particular carbon so this is basically called as a one to addition mechanism so here the addition occurs only in this particular between this carbon and this nitrogen bond so that is what is called as the one to addition so here also the nitrogen is lost the driving force for both this 1 2 addition or 1 4 addition is basically the loss of nitrogen so that is why the hydride anion adds across the double bond and we end up with the final product so whether it follows the 1 2 addition or 1 4 addition uh, are possible both options are possible but in both the cases we end up with the same alkene so in other words in many cases it will be very difficult to prove that this particular reaction proceeds exclusively via 1,4 addition or by 1,2 addition but combinedly we can say we get the same product so the product formation can be explained either by 1,2 addition or 1,4 addition so this is how this uh, reaction actually leads to the final product so this reaction is basically called as the Hutchins modification of Wolkwishner reaction. So, the use of sodium cyanoborohydrate is the differentiating factor compared to the Wolkwishner reduction because in Wolkwishner reduction we generally use simple hydrazine and we also have seen the previous uh, tocyl hydrazone derivatives which also loses nitrogen gas to give the alkene product. So, this modification that is conversion of a alpha beta unsaturated system into a simple alkene is called as Hutchins modification of Wolkwishner reduction and this is a basically a redox reaction and let us move on to the next problem so this problem occurred in June 2013 so the major product followed uh, as I mentioned earlier also we are mainly looking for the major product we are not looking for the other or the complete product that are formed in a particular reaction so to explain a reaction mechanism we have to give some justifications so that justification that is microscopic reversibility electronic factors steric factors all should support what is the major product that is observed so that is what we are telling in the previous case also we saw 1 2 and 1 4 additions are possible so either of them can happen and that leads to the same product so here again the question is the major product formed in this particular reaction we have an alcohol and the reaction uh, is happening in the presence of a strong base sodium hydride and we have carbon disulfide a methyl iodide and the reaction occurs at 200 degrees centigrade so 
the hydroxy compound is the starting material. In the final product, if you look at, we have the elimination that is happening. So, uh, option A and B have two uh, alkenes, so different alkenes that are formed, both are isomers of each other. And in C, we have the reduction of the double bond also happens, like uh, we end up with the saturated system. And D, we have a fused reaction that is happening between the two menthol like system. So, let us look at how the reaction actually proceeds. The first step is we have a strong base. So, when we have a strong base, obviously we know the strong base is going to abstract the most acidic proton. And in this particular case, this hydroxy uh, hydrogen is the most acidic uh, one. So, the base abstract this uh, hydrogen and we end up with the oxide anion. So, uh, this is the alkoxide we can say, this alkoxide anion is formed in this particular case. So, the next one is the alkoxide anion reacts with carbon disulfide. So, we have a carbon which is attached to two electronegative substituents that is sulfur atom. So, they will pull the electron towards itself making this carbon more electrophilic in nature. So, that is the reason we have a nucleophile that alkoxide anion is there and we have an electrophilic carbon. So, the nucleophile easily attacks the electrophilic carbon and we end up with the salt. So, this salt is basically called as the xanthate salt. So, this is the uh, thioester and uh, if it is a thioester, we only will have the sulfur derivatives. So, here we have both the sulfur are present. So, these type of derivatives are generally called as xanthate esters and uh, we have the potassium salt of this uh, ester is formed, uh, xanthate salt is formed and this next reacts with the methyl iodide. See, this is very similar to our uh, normal uh, esterification type reaction. So, we end up with the methyl xanthate uh, ester that is formed in this particular case. Methyl xanthate is formed. So, once the methyl xanthate is formed, this at the high temperature that is 200 degree because the reaction is occurring at a very high temperature. So, this undergoes a intramolecular elimination reaction. So, we will see how the reaction mechanism actually happens. So, this double bond actually abstracts this particular hydrogen atom and this bond is shifted and uh, the carbon oxygen bond is also shifted. So, this leads to a intermediate as shown here and for this elimination to occur, the hydroxy group and this hydrogen atom, this oxygen and this hydrogen are in the syn orientation or in the cis orientation. So, this elimination mainly occurs because if you look at uh, this particular center, we have two hydrogens that will be present and the only the hydrogen that is uh, cis or uh, in the same uh, orientation to the hydroxyl oxygen is the one that is abstracted by this particular double bond. So, this elimination is an example of a syn elimination and in the final step what happens is like uh, we uh, lose that uh, entire part is lost. So, we have the carbonyl sulphide and the methane thiol as the side products or the byproducts formed and our major product is going to be the alkene that is formed. So, this is basically a syn elimination of the hydroxy alcohol. So, we started with the uh, menthol uh, similar to the menthol derivative. So, that hydroxy group is lost to give the alkene compound here and this reaction is called as the Chugave elimination. So, here an alcohol is converted into an alkene via the involvement of a xanthate. So, this reaction is an example of elimination reaction. And let us move on to the next one. This problem was asked in June 2017 and if you look at uh, this particular uh, case, this is very similar to the previous one what we have seen. So, here again we have a alcohol that is uh, given in the starting material and in the final products we have four options. The reaction actually occurs uh, very similar to the previous case that means uh, we are actually running this reaction under Chugave elimination conditions sodium hydride, carbon disulfide, methyl iodide and the temperature is not given here, but only the solvent is given. Actually, this solvent has a very high boiling point that is around 216. So, in other words, we can say this is again very similar to the previous case where we uh, carried out the reaction at 200 degree. So, 
the alcohol group is going to be lost. So, we are going to get the alkene. So, that is what is the reaction we have seen earlier. So, this is also a very similar reaction. The only difference is we have different alkenes that are formed in this particular case. That means, four different options are given. So, in the A, uh, the double bond is formed in the ring junction. In B, the double bond is formed here and the C, we have another double bond that is formed here. And in the last option, the double bond is completely reduced. So, we can say this is not the product because we know what is the Chugev elimination. The Chugev elimination happens only with uh, this is what is called as a syn elimination. So, we have to only see what is going to be the actual reaction that is possible. So, which uh, one of the isomer that will be formed, we have to see. So, as uh, similar to the previous one, the first step is the abstraction of the uh, uh, hydroxyl uh, hydrogen by the sodium hydride base. So, we end up with the alkoxide anion. So, this alkoxide anion now reacts with carbon disulfide followed by methyl iodide. So, I am not going to explain all the things because we have seen that in the previous case. So, we directly end up with the corresponding uh, methyl xanthate and this undergoes uh, syn elimination at a uh, very high temperature. So, here this is actually projecting towards the observer. So, uh, in this one we have the hydrogen which is away from the observer. So, in other words what we can clearly say is this hydrogen cannot undergo syn elimination. So, that is completely ruled out. So, we have only one option. So, the option is going to be the adjacent carbon on the left hand side is the only thing which can undergo elimination. So, because this is a syn elimination, so we have only one hydrogen that is available for this elimination to occur and uh, we can clearly say what is going to be the product. So, the product will be formed only at this position because the hydroxy group is present here. So, this is only the place where we have the hydrogen which is uh, syn or uh, cis to this hydroxy unit because the other one hydrogen is in the trans orientation. So, that means the alkene cannot form at the ring junction. So, that is ruled out and uh, the hydrogen also cannot leave from this hydrogen because this is very far. So, for the syn elimination to occur, they should be adjacent to each other. So, the only possibility is a hydrogen from this particular carbon only can be lost. So, we end up with the syn elimination and this is going to be our final product. So, let us move on to the next uh, workout problem. So, this problem uh, was asked in 2000, uh, December 2013. So, here again if you look at the reaction, these are very similar to the one we have actually seen. We have a carbonyl group and the reaction happens in the presence of uh, tocyl hydrazine in the solvent ethanol. And in the second uh, or the next step we have two equivalent of n-butyl lithium in the presence of TH is used and in the last step we have DM up. So, we have actually three steps that is happening. So, from the knowledge what we have seen so far, we know this alkene uh, can be converted, uh, this carbonyl compound can be converted to the tocyl hydrazone that is possible and the base may abstract up uh, hydrogen atoms and then we may actually end up with some alkene or similar type of compound, but we also have DMF. So, that means uh, an introduction of the formyl group is also possible. So, these are all some of the clues or hints given in this particular uh, question. So, we have to exactly find it out what is actually the final product. So, if you look at the uh, four combinations or the four different options that are given are the first one has an aldehydic unit and it also has an alkene or the double bond is present and in the second one we have the amide unit is given with an alkene and in the other two options we again have the same aldehyde with the uh, a double bond that is alpha beta unsaturated system, one is also an alpha beta unsaturated system. So, the only difference is uh, which of the carbon that aldehyde group is attached, whether it is on the same carbon where the carbonyl group was present or it is on the adjacent carbon. So, that is the only thing we have to figure it out and the last option is the amide group uh, that is attached to that one. So, we have to uh, we have some clues which are given here. DMF may generally give an aldehydic product. So, maybe option 2 and 4 may not be the right uh, answers. So, option 1 and 2, 1 and 3 are the only thing we will have to figure it out. And the only thing, the crucial part is whether the aldehyde is present on the same carbon where the carbonyl car, uh, group was present 
or it is on the adjacent one. So, that is the only thing we have to figure it out. So, let us look at the reaction. Uh, we know the first couple of steps uh, how the reaction actually proceeds. So, we end up with this particular hydrazine, uh, hydrazone derivative and the next step is we are going to use a strong base and if you look at uh, the question, there are two equivalents of uh, N-butyl lithium is used. So, there should be some reason why we are using two equivalents of uh, N-butyl lithium. So, we have one acidic proton, we also have another acidic proton. So, that means if you are going to use two equivalents of a strong base, obviously these two are actually going to be abstracted by the base. So, these two hydra, hydrogen atoms are abstracted by the base. So, we end up with a, a dilithio derivative that is formed in this particular case. And uh, what is going to happen is we already know this uh, shift of uh, electrons we have seen earlier also. So, the loss of nitrogen is the driving force for this one. So, the in the first step what we end up is we basically uh, end up with the vinyl lithium derivative. We will see what is the vinyl lithium derivative that is going to be formed. So, uh, the main thing is loss of nitrogen gas in the subsequent step is the crucial step for the reaction to move forward. So, uh, the tosyl anion is always uh, lost. So, this reaction is the most uh, common thing that will happen and uh, we end up with a product that is uh, basically the vinyl lithium anion. So, basically here instead of uh, the negative charge because for our easy understanding I just put like a negative charge but this is the carbon where the lithium atom will be present. Since lithium is having a positive charge, uh, we can write simply like a C minus that is formed. So, this is nothing but the vinyl lithium derivative and this is the nucleophile that will undergo the next reaction because DMF if we are going to use DMF is nothing but the electrophile that is used in this reaction because if you look at the structure, the dimethyl NN dimethyl formamide. So, this uh, carbonyl carbon uh, pulls the amide carbon pulls the electron towards itself. So, we will have a delta plus charge on this particular carbon atom and this is the electrophile that is actually going to be involved in this reaction. We have a nucleophile. So, you can easily say how the reaction actually will proceed. So, the next step is going to be the reaction of the introduction of the formyl group that is the CHO group is actually introduced. So, now you exactly know on which carbon the alkene or the anion is formed, the same carbon on which the carbonyl carbon was present in the beginning. So, that is the carbon which is getting converted to the carbanion. So, the electrophile uh, attaches itself on this particular carbon atom. So, we end up with a product on this particular carbon that means the double bond is formed uh, on this uh, carbonyl carbon and the aldehyde group is attached exactly at the carbonyl carbon where we started off in the starting material. So, this is nothing but the, the product is a alpha beta unsaturated system. So, we started from a carbonyl compound and we ended up with the alpha beta unsaturated system. So, these are all the overall reactions that is happening in this particular case and we can clearly say if uh, in the other exams if uh, these kind of questions are asked you can exactly look at what is the attachment of the carbonyl group that is the place where the aldehydic carbon will be formed. The only thing is whether you will have a double bond on uh, which side of the uh, cyclic system that will be formed that is the only thing a tricky thing people can ask because this is a symmetrical molecule. So, whether you abstract the hydrogen from the top or at the bottom, I mean uh, adjacent carbons, they are not going to make any difference because we are going to still end up with the uh, symmetrical molecule only as a final product. But if there are other groups which are making it asymmetric, then there is a possibility that we may end up with one of the product. And uh, in those kind of systems, we have to actually look for 1-3 diaxial interactions and if those kind of things are present, then we have to be little bit careful in deciding which side the double bond will be formed. So, in the later part of the series when we are going to talk about kinetic control and uh, 
thermodynamic control of enolate formation we will be looking at those kind of uh, subtle steric effects in a much more detailed way so let us move on to the next problem so this was asked in december 2015 so here again the question is the major product formed in the following reaction sequences so here we have uh, uh, benzene selenyl chloride is uh, given here as one of the reagent and we have acetic acid and sodium acetate in the next step and we also have hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide in another step so these are all the different uh, reagents or conditions given here this is uh, step number 1 this is step number 2 this is step number 3 we are given a uh, cyclooctadiene so that is the starting material that is given and this is converted into four different options as uh, shown here so the option a has the introduction of a oac group because we are using acetic acid and sodium acetate so obviously people may think o oh, acetate group can be easily introduced because we have a double bond the only thing is there is a shift of double bond that is happening isomerization of the double bond happening so this is one of the product in the other uh, case what happens is uh, the acetate uh, unit adds to a different carbon so this is going to be a tricky one because on what reason this particular carbon can actually attract this acetoxide unit see generally when a reaction happens that should be an electrophilic site that should be a nucleophilic site so when we have electrophilic and nucleophilic sites then the reaction is very easily occurring but if there is a neutral site where there is no possibility of see the reaction occurs because we have electron density redistribution that is what generally the driving force for many of the reaction in some place there is electron rich in some place electron deficiency so there is a redistribution of electron happens in other words the bond formed because of the electron redistribution so for those kind of reactions to occur we do need some conditions electron richness should be there so in other words it's very difficult to uh, accept that the product may be formed on a carbon where there is no possibility of having any electron richness or electron deficiency because it's a simple sp3 hybridized carbon atom so the sp3 hybridized carbon atoms because all organic compounds are covalent in nature in other words they are mainly neutral compounds so the redox kind of reactions if it has to occur then there should be some difference in the electron distribution so that means b is uh, probably not going to be the product let us see whether it can be the product or not and the other two systems are given where we have the uh, the eight membered ring is getting converted into a bicyclic pentylene systems so the pentylene systems are formed one is the uh, reduced pentylene system another one is the normal one so in one of the product we have the acetoxy unit that is present so in other words what we can say is uh, we started off with the cyclooctadiene so one of the double bond maybe the acetate group is added and another double bond is actually retained so probably this is uh, acceptable one because if we count the number of uh, carbon atoms we have eight and in this pentylene system if we count here uh, this is not the iupac nomenclature only simply to count the number of carbons we are counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 so that means eight carbons are present in the starting material eight carbons are present in the final product so there is no loss or no gain <coughs> in the ring system but of course there is a acetate unit that is added that is separate but the ring system there is no gain or loss of carbon atoms let us look at how the reaction actually proceeds so in the first step uh, phscl uh, that benzene selenyl chloride adds across the double bond so any one of the since this is a symmetrical molecule we can add it on the left hand side or on the right hand side for uh, convenience i have just put it on the right hand side so Uh, this uh, selenide forms a tricyclic uh, system or like a cyclopropyl like system that is formed this is basically the seleno ring that is formed so this intermediate is formed the selenium is now having a positive charge so what is going to be the next step is the acetate anion which is nucleophilic attacks the other double bond because here we do not have any uh, uh, electron distribution is completely neutral here so we only have the double bond in the other place so the acetate anion attacks the other carbon so here for our convenience i have just numbered it this is not the iupac nomenclature 
only for uh, which carbon is attached to which carbon to find it out I had just numbered it. So the acetate anion attacks uh, here uh, as we say this particular carbon atom. So this will now shift towards the negative charge will go to this carbon and this will now attack this particular carbon either 5 or 6 can be attacked. We will see whether it attacks 5 or uh, uh, 6 we can see and that leads to the opening of the selenium oxide ring because selenium is having a positive charge so this cannot exist for longer time. So the nucleophile will attack to open up that particular uh, cyclopropyl uh, like uh, the three membered seleno ring system and that opens up that and we end up with the the sec, uh, this first carbon getting connected to the fifth carbon. So the first carbon getting connected to the fifth carbon that is what is actually happening. So there is a bond that is formed like this. So this is what is the ring junction that is formed here. So uh, for our convenience we can understand this and in the second carbon the acetoxy unit is added. So uh, in the next step under hydrogen peroxide because we are using the hydrogen peroxide for the oxidation reaction. So here the selenium uh, has a lone pair of electrons so that attacks this oxygen with uh, the hydroxy unit of the hydrogen peroxide captures the other hydrogen and we end up with the oxidation of the selenium or selenium oxide uh, bond is formed. And in this particular case the oxygen is having a negative charge, selenium is having a positive charge because selenium lost that electron, oxygen gained that electron and with the concomitant loss of water molecule because this H and OH forms together a water molecule and that is lost, the oxygen is added to the selenium. So this selenoxide is formed in this particular case and the oxygen has the negative charge so this will abstract the adjacent hydrogen atom and with this bond shifting towards uh, the cyclopentyl system with the concomitant loss of the uh, carbon selenium bond because selenium is having a positive charge so it wants to take away the electron with itself and we end up with the final product which uh, gets a alkene or the double bond is formed acetate is also added so this is going to be the final product that is formed in this particular reaction. So this uh, final uh, elimination reaction actually is a intramolecular syn elimination reaction and uh, this is the driving force for the final product formation.